Why does being poor cost so much money? It's more than just resentful whining from a person who's struggling financially. The truth is that living in poverty actually costs more money. Therefore, it becomes nearly impossible for those with less money to ever improve their financial circumstances. What are some of the reasons for poor people's expensive cost of living in a country like the USA? The idea that being impoverished is more costly appears contradictory in a society where wealth is frequently associated with a higher quality of life. But many people must deal with this reality. Here is why living in poverty costs more. Number one is how much food costs in food deserts. Food is one of the main expenses that disproportionately affects the underprivileged. Prices in small and major retailers differ by as much as 30 to 50 percent according to a stark contrast. Smaller retailers, which are frequently the only choice in impoverished areas, have much higher prices than chains like Costco or Trader Joe's. When there are no reasonably priced grocery stores with an easy commute, a situation known as a food desert develops, driving locals to purchase at more costly establishments. Number two is the excessive rental cost. Another big expenditure is housing, as most landlords want a security deposit in addition to the first and last month's rent up front. If you're paying $800 a month for rent, you'll need $2,400 in the bank to cover your rent. The financial burden is increased by extra expenses such as laundromat fees for tenants without an in-unit laundry. Number three is the effects of overdraft fees and banking. Even though it's sometimes considered a basic function, banking can be too costly for the underprivileged. The people with the lowest bank balances are disproportionately affected by overdraft penalties which penalize account holders for negative balances. Banks received $9.9 .9 billion in overdraft fees in 2022 alone. For people with low resources, monthly service fees to keep an account further complicate matters. Number four is the effects of poor nutrition over time. Obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease are just a few of the health problems that can result from making cheaper, poor dietary choices out of necessity. Long term, this leads to increased healthcare costs, which further solidifies the poverty cycle. Number five is the changing patterns of spending. The Hamilton Project reports that during the past 30 years, lower income households have consumed less, but a larger percentage of their income has gone toward meeting fundamental requirements. Higher income groups, on the other hand, spend more money overall, but allocate a smaller percentage of their income to necessities. Number six is regressive taxation and the credit industry. Low credit ratings, which are typical of people from underprivileged origins, lead to higher annual percentage rates and make it more difficult to get loans. This makes people more dependent on predatory lending methods such as payday loans, which provide quick cash at extremely high interest rates. Regressive taxes, which take a higher share of the income of the poor than of the wealthy, also disproportionately affect them. Examples of this include flat levies on commodities. This investigation into the paradox of poverty exposes a sobering fact that as living becomes more expensive, the poorer one becomes. Food deserts, banking fees, regressive taxes, and other obstacles pile up, making it harder and harder for those with low incomes to escape the cycle of poverty. When tackling the structural problems that support economic disparity, it's essential to comprehend these dynamics. What's going on with the US labor market, and is that the cause of the poorest high cost of living? Labor analysts claim that the job market is still robust despite a slowdown from pandemic era highs, but employees don't appear to agree. According to Glassdoor data, employee confidence dropped last month to its lowest point since 2016. A year ago, 54% of employees said they had a favorable six-month view for their employers. This percentage has now dropped to about 46%. In the meantime, the ZipRecruiter Job Seeker Confidence Index dropped to its lowest level since early 2022 in the second quarter, losing six points. Economists speculated that the contrast between a robust labor market and declining sentiment is probably caused by workers' financial strain and the fact that the previous baseline was an extremely competitive job market in 2021 and 2022. As per Julia Pollock, chief economist at ZipRecruiter, workers still have more leverage and more job security than before the pandemic. 
I believe job seekers feel worse off when they compare this environment to 2021 and 2022, she continued. Finding a job is becoming more difficult and job seekers are searching while facing more financial hardship. For instance, in an effort to slow the economy and control rapidly growing consumer prices, the Federal Reserve raised borrowing costs in response to inflation. As a result, interest rates for consumers have increased, including those for credit cards and mortgages. The savings rate has sharply decreased. This month, student loan installments started up again. Economists stated that a number of indicators such as job vacancies, resignations, layoffs and the unemployment rate point to a robust labor market. It's softer but steady, according to Glassdoor's head economist Daniel Zhao. When you consider all these indicators together, they suggest that the labor market is in a reasonably stable state rather than the one that's necessarily expanding rapidly. In general, Pollock stated that the signs are comparable to or perhaps greater than those from the period before the epidemic when unemployment was low, more people were entering the workforce and racial and gender employment disparities were closing. She remarked, that's a very good thing. As a measure of employees' willingness or ability to quit a job, the August quit rate was 2.3% according to a study released by the U.S. Department of Labor. This figure is consistent with February 2020. It was down from a 3% peak in April 2022 when a record number of workers were resigning in what became known as the Great Resignation, but it remained unchanged from July. Similarly, the hiring rate is about the same as it was in February 2020, albeit a little lower. According to Labor Department data, job postings, a measure of companies' desire for labor, are 37% higher and layoffs are still 15% lower than before the COVID-19 outbreak. In actuality, the Labor Department announced that there were 9.6 million job opportunities in August, a considerable increase of 690,000. Economists have grounds to believe that the growth is unusual nevertheless. First of all, there are often large ups and downs in the data series from month to month. The overall pattern is evident. According to economists, the number of job postings, resignations and hirings has decreased from its peak during the pandemic. Zhao stated, I believe a lot of people are comparing the job market today to a year or two ago when things were hot. But naturally, the economies of 2021 and 2022 also had issues. Among the issues, because of decreased purchasing power, inflation has reached its highest point since 1981, undermining the large raises that employees have been receiving. Some industries, including technology, overhired, which forced major tech companies to fire tens of thousands of workers. According to Zhao, an overheated labor market is unsustainable since it increases wages and job turnover to the point that inflation is fueled. The degree to which this might have happened during the most recent inflationary period is unknown. The current labor market is in a better place despite the fact that it's more difficult for many workers to find employment or receive a raise, Zhao stated. Economists noted that it's obviously uncertain if and to what degree the job market would continue to cool. Zhao listed further economic challenges like rising oil prices, ongoing auto worker strikes, and the possibility of a government shutdown in November in addition to increasing interest rates. How to combat the price of poverty? Wish we had some magical and fallible guidance to break this down for you. Regrettably, it appears that the existing economic structure in America, as well as other nations to be honest, is intentionally intended to keep people in poverty. It's not as easy as pulling yourself up by your bootstraps to get out of financial difficulties. Recalling that this is a marathon and not a sprint is the finest counsel. Don't try to solve all of these issues at once because you won't be able to. Rather, attempt to gradually chip away at them. Maybe you'll set aside a little more money for a slightly better pair of boots the next time you need them. Alternatively, you begin setting away a modest sum of money each month to help you pay for your subsequent little fix. Try not to spend any unexpected windfall, such as an inheritance or an unexpected bonus from work impulsively. Do share your opinions on this in the comments section below. For more interesting stories and updates, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon for notifications. Bye for now.